What's new about Flow's new postpaid combo plans? They're designed to give you the flexibility to do everything in your mobile life. Simple and easy monthly plans packed with even more data, talk and text so you can stream, post and share anywhere. Talk with anyone on any network or even further away. Plus, roll over unused data and minutes or share with family. Simple, flexible plans with everything you need. Flow's Postpaid Combo Plans. We've got big plans for you. Good evening and welcome to a very lively Q&A focusing on the soon to be established medical cannabis industry here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I'm the moderator Candice Seeley. Now medicinal cannabis refers to cannabis for medical purposes versus for recreational use. And this can range anything from the raw herbal product all the way to products or drugs, which is up to pharmaceutical standards. Now, lately, as I'm sure you recognize, medicinal cannabis has been garnering quite a lot of attention, but there's still lots of controversy over the legal, ethical, and societal implications of use. Be that as it may, uh, many states in the United States are freeing up the, the cannabis, so to speak, and allowing for it to be used for specific medical conditions. Here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we are on the verge of establishing a modern medicinal cannabis industry. The intent is for SVG to be a leading producer of organically certified medicinal cannabis, unrivaled by any other country in the Western Hemisphere. In just a few short weeks, on December 10th to be precise, three bills are expected to be passed which will position SVG as a leading Caribbean hub in medicinal cannabis innovation. Our discussion, or I should say our Q&A session this evening, is designed for you to answer all of your burning questions. Some of you would have sent in your questions before. If you haven't, that's okay. You can post your questions throughout the session in the comments below. But of course, for me to be moderating, I have to have an esteemed panel. So it's time to meet our panel. So on the right, we have Mr. Richard Fonklin. Uh, Mr. Fonklin is from the Jamaica Ganja Farmers Association. We also have Alvin, who is from the Greg's Rastafari Society. To my left, we have the Honorable Saboto Caesar, Minister of Agriculture, Forestries, Fisheries, Labor and Rural Transformation, and also Miss Annette Mark, Executive Director at Invest SVG. So we're going to get started with a few introductions, starting for us with Minister Saboto Caesar. Thank you very much, Candice. It's definitely a pleasure and an honor to be here this evening. And I want to greet persons in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but I know that we are also streaming throughout the OECS in CARICOM, and there are persons who are following us internationally. I am the Minister of Agriculture and Industry here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and I have the pleasure of working with stakeholders locally, regionally, and internationally towards the establishment of a modern medical <laughs> cannabis industry. Ms. Mark? Good evening to our online um, um, viewers 
and to my esteemed panel. I am Annette Mark. I am the Executive Director of Invest SVG. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Fonklin? Okay, my name is uh, Richard Fonklin. I am Jamaican. I am a cannabis consultant. I'm a member of the Jamaica Ganja Growers and Producers Association. And I have uh, been a cannabis user for upwards of 40 years and a serious advocate of the use of cannabis for medicinal purposes. And Alvin Buffer Collins. Greetings, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. My name is Alvin Collins, a.k.a. Bufferman, representing as a traditional grower for around about 15 years. Give thanks. Okay, thank you, everyone. Now, our Q&A will take a bit of a different format that you're probably accustomed to. It will not just focus on you fielding questions to the panelists, neither me fielding questions to them. We'll also be sharing a, a few short clips, a few short videos, uh, focusing on issues that many of you have an interest in. And since we are talking about medicinal cannabis, uh, before we get started, we share a very compelling story. Check this out. It was January 2012, Afghanistan. About 7,000 miles away from his family in Colorado, Matt Figge received this video from his wife, Paige. It's horrible seeing these videos when I'm deployed. It was his five-year-old daughter, Charlotte, seizing. Diagnosed with a severe form of epilepsy, she was having 300 seizures a week, each attack so severe it had the potential to kill her. They had already tried dozens of high-powered drugs. We needed to try something else and at that point in time, marijuana was that natural course of action to try. At home in Colorado, Paige searched for marijuana high in CBD. That's the ingredient some scientists think helps seizures and also low in THC. Remember, she didn't want to get her daughter stoned. She found a small amount at a Denver dispensary. The owner was surprised that anyone would even want it. They said, it's funny because no one buys this, you know. Um, that was the general consensus, that nobody wanted it. It didn't have any effect. Paige paid $800 for a small bag and took it home. I had a friend that was starting a business on making medicine. And I said, can you help me extract the medicine from the, this bag of marijuana? <laughs> I measured it with a syringe and squirted it under her tongue. It was exciting and very nerve-wracking. Holding Charlotte in her arms, Paige waited. An hour ticked by, and then another, and then another. She didn't have a seizure that day, and then she didn't have a seizure that night. Did you sit there and, sit yeah. there and look at your watch? And... Right, I thought, this is crazy. And then she didn't have one the next day, and then the next day, and I thought, that is, she would have had 100 by now. And I just, I know, I just thought, this is insane. I want to paint my nails. You want to paint your nails? I'll paint your nails. I literally see Charlotte's brain making connections that haven't been made in years. It's almost seeming to build her brain where before it seemed broken. And while scientists are still at the very early stages of knowing if this is actually happening, I can tell you it was remarkable to see her progress. In the three months since we first met her, we saw a change. She was now talking more. Say puppy. puppy. Yeah. She's horseback riding. Good girl. She even rides a bike on her own. I remember how happy Paige was. Like, it's really working. I can't believe it. Yeah, that was, that was pretty amazing to hear. It had worked. But in just a couple of weeks, the excitement was overshadowed by panic. Paige was running out of marijuana, and the dispensary didn't have any more of that particular strain. Even if there was more, the monthly price tag would have been astronomical, $2,000, and not a penny of it covered by insurance. Wow, definitely an extraordinary result. Um, 
cannabis sorry being used to reduce seizures that is definitely something spectacular but as they shared in the video it can be quite expensive but we're definitely hoping that um the strains that we have here in st vincent and the grenadines can fulfill that need we're going to stick a little bit on the medical side of things and uh, head over to alvin alvin you have been using cannabis for medicinal purposes yourself what sort of benefits have you or anyone around you experienced well personally i was suffering from migraine headaches you know and the duration of the headaches lasted around about three weeks and by using cannabis recreationally i am not getting no form of headache again so I will say that is a benefit recreationally. And I also know of persons who, who suffers from epilepsy and also asthma. By using the roots of the cannabis, they, they're not getting it again. So that also is a benefit uh, medicinally. And Mr. Funklin, I'm going to hand over to you. You're from Jamaica. Can you share a little bit about the Jamaican experience um, from the medical perspective? Uh, uh, cannabis has been used for many, many years in folk medicine. Um, truth be told, cannabis has been around for centuries. Um, it's, it's used in Asia, Africa, Egypt, and even Europe. I think... Uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines and most of the Caribbean islands, cannabis was introduced to our, our region by the, in, the East Indian indentured servants that came to work in the sugarcane. And from then, it resonated with persons who started using it as teas, as rubs. Um, it eventually st started to be used for asthma and all kinds of ailments in the, in, in the Caribbean. I, I personally have an issue with glaucoma, and I'm using a cannabis drug, cannabis um, solution for, for treatment. Uh, there, are, there are so many benefits. There are so many strains in the Caribbean that can be used. We have, we have an ideal situation here with our climate. We have some land race indigenous strains up in the hills of St. Vincent, all over the Caribbean. That's high in uh, uh, CBDs. CBDs is one of the major medicinal components in, in, in cannabis. What, what has happened is scientists have learned to isolate the various compounds. Originally as folk, folk medicine, it was, it, it was a trial and error and it did uh, cure a lot of ailments. But now that science has gotten involved, there, there's so much more that can be done in the industry. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fonklin. Now, we have a question that came in earlier. Let me just emphasize that you can send in your questions here in the comments. Uh, just post your question in the comments and we will definitely get to it. Um, so we had a question that came in earlier where someone, a gentleman, shared that he was caught with uh, some amongst, so to speak, of cannabis. And his question is... Uh, how are we moving towards a medicinal cannabis industry when persons can still be locked up for small quantities? And I'm going to direct that question to you, Minister Caesar. Yes, um, I want to place the discussion within the, the context that is being canvassed currently by a particular policy direction that the aim and objective is to establish a modern medicinal cannabis industry. And uh, the two major tiers of a modern medicinal cannabis industry, one is the production of medicine, and the second has to do with scientific research. Both of these tiers fall squarely within the realms of our international legal obligations pursuant to 
the international narcotic treaties and conventions that we, we have signed. However, it is critical and very important that as we address the issue of cannabis, that we have a holistic appreciation of cannabis within our space. And currently, there are two bills which are being drafted by the Honorable Attorney General. And one has to do with the Drugs Prevention of Misuse Amendment Bill, and the other, the Rehabilitation of Offenders Amendment Bill. And uh, the overarching objective of the Drugs Prevention of Misuse Amendment Bill is to create a particular space so that there may be a non-custodial sentence for particular quantities. However, these quantities are not yet cemented and the matter is still being discussed. And in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, I expect to, to see over the upcoming weeks a greater debate on these issues as it pertains to the quantities. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Minister Caesar. We have a question that came in a short while ago. It was inbox from Ras Chatier Rose, who is also on our live feed. Now, Ras Chatier Rose says, I have been studying the use of hemp and cannabis for years. I have done a lot of research into the plant and its many uses. What proposals as well as medicinal uses have been looked into? And uh, Minister Caesar, I will go back to you and then go to Mr. Fonklin to jump in on that. So over the last 12 months, there's definitely been an intensification as it pertains to the study of cannabis and its particular application as an industry here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. But I just want to, to take us back a bit. The practice of using cannabis in St. Vincent and the Grenadines for medicinal purposes is not something that is new. In fact, we, we had several stakeholders come into the Ministry of Agriculture and Industry, even to invest SVG, over the past six months. And what they have noted is that they actually produce medicinal cannabis products. What we are actually engaging in here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is that we are advancing the scientific research. Many persons who have been engaged in the production of medicinal cannabis, they were doing it at the level of a cottage industry. And what we want to do is to create a modern medicinal cannabis industry. And in the question, it noted that hemp, it has been proven scientifically that there are significant medicinal properties also in hemp. And we have seen already several local stakeholders working with several regional and international investors and even some local investors as well to ensure that the cutting edge science is brought to St. Vincent and the Grenadines and that we apply it to the existing context to advance the local science and an appreciation for greater patient care. Okay, thank you so much. And um, we do see, okay, before we hand over to Mr. Fonklin, yes, we do see your comments coming in. We would definitely get to your comments and questions shortly, Mr. Fonklin. Okay, scientific research has enabled um, scientists to isolate the various compounds in cannabis what, uh, so that they, they can, they, they, the various compounds can be used for ailment specifics, as like a cure for epilepsy, cancer, uh, etc. So that's, that's what has happened with, with, with this new research and development of, of this plant. Uh, there, there are 
there are different uses and i think uh in response to the the caller or the person that contacted a while ago the whole cannabis plant can be used there's nothing wasted in the cannabis plant you can use the trash you can use the stalks and the stems after you have extracted for building materials uh, you can use it for for uh textiles it can be used for for uh for various other products so what's going to happen with this industry it's going to be very diversified uh you're going to have industrial uses medicinal uses for the plant and it can only develop further okay thank you and um another question that was sent in earlier Presumably from a college student, whether it be technical or community college, we're not sure. But uh, the young lady is saying that next year she will be graduating and she's inquiring what sort of jobs would be available for someone like her. And Miss um, Mark, I think we'll start with you on that one. Thanks, Candice. Um, as you're aware, this is a new industry for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, we have had a number of investors that have come to, to invest SVG, both local and international investors. We see a range of, we've seen a range of proposals. We have persons that are interested in export, manufacturing, production, oversight, research, and uh, you see, you're seeing different proposals that come to us. So we have persons who want to just do like greenhouse production or they want to do, they, it could be a combination of all of them, by the way, okay? So greenhouse production, open field production, um, cultivation. We see value, at, they, they, certain people are interested in value added products also. What I can tell you though is that we have had say close to about 20 persons, 20 potential investors, let me, let me choose my words carefully, both locally and internationally. And what we in Invest SVG have done is that we took a sampling of the persons that have sent in their proposals to us. And I'm gonna say this, and I'm being very careful with what I say here because what I'm saying here is not cast in stone. So I just want to be, I just want to make make sure that our listeners know that this was just an in-house um, research that we did based on what came into us. Okay. All right. Um, so, sorry. The, um, so of the twenty investors or more that have come to us, in looking at what they have put, they have given us, we ha looked at the one of the bigger companies to one of the smaller companies, and we took it eight of the um, investors' um, proposals and took out um, this information. And what we have noted is that um, from those eight persons is that we, we saw upwards of more than 1,000 to 1,500 jobs that could possibly be available. But then again, I say that this is not cast in stone. This is a new industry, and after the bill is passed, we are not really too sure exactly what will happen. Things may just explode where, you know, there are a number of, of areas that persons will be able to get jobs in, such as with it working in the, the, the construction industry, working in working in offices, working in factories, and there are a number of linkages that will be available in respect to this uh, modern medicinal cannabis industry. So, uh, like I said, it's not cast in stone. It was only a survey that we did. It could be more, it could be less. So, but what I do know, jobs will be created. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Ms. Mark. I just want to stay with you and ask one more question because you mentioned investors. What exactly are the investors interested in doing here in St. Vincent and the Grandies? There have been a lot of interest. So what are they interested in doing here in SVG? In, in an, in, well, the investors that have come to us, they, co they have come for a number of reasons, that, as I've said. Under the the act itself, um, it would provide for a number of areas such as production, export, manufacturing, cultivation. 
Um, there is even the chance for research and oversight in within the industry. So you find that the number, the investors that have come into us, you would see that they are either interested in doing all, some, or just part. Um, for example, I'll give like certain examples. We've had um, an investor that has come into us who is interested in doing oversight to ensure that um, persons that export export cannabis, whether it is it's in the raw form or any other how, that it meets with all of the standards that are expected for export into certain countries like Germany, the US, Can well, Canada and the UK. Um, and I'm sure the, the minister may touch on these standards a little later on when he's speaking. So we've had persons who are interested in oversight, we've had persons who are interested in production manufacturing cultivation and and um and research and research is very big again i'm sure the minister will expand on this uh we have persons who are interested in things like um such things as a like setting up of a hotel for instance where persons can come to recuperate um they can come in they can come in see a doctor be um, prescribed with um, certain um, medicines for their ailments, depending on depending on what um, they may be suffering. So suffering with, so we're seeing different things. Um, um, again, of course, beyond just doing the the um, the primary product, what we are very interested in seeing, and we have seen a lot of, is persons are interested in doing um, value added products, and of course, in looking at each investor, one of the things that we will, the, some of the things that we will be looking at is the sustainability of the investment. Um, we will also be looking at make, ensuring that whatever the investor does, whatever is set up here, improves the livelihood of persons in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and also assists with economic growth in, in St. Vincent. Um, can, Candice, if I may just bring some context to the entire process evolution in the agricultural sector that we are currently witnessing. Of course, it's well known that we started, we saw a migration into the Caribbean, and the main thrust was when our brothers and sisters or foreparents came as hunters and gatherers. And for the most part, bartering was done. And then we had the introduction of plantation agriculture after we had conquests and particularly so during the period of colonization. And we had experiments throughout the, the region and here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines with several commodities, tobacco, cotton, sugar cane, where sugar was used as a sweetener in, in Europe and there was a huge market. And then in the 1950s in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we had bananas, but before that, we had a massive expansion in our root production. Because of the World Trade Organization's banana case and the results of the banana case and the consequential removal of preferential treatment to colonies, well, former colonies in Africa, the Pacific, and the Caribbean, we, when we lost our preferences, the production of bananas, we were definitely not in the realm of being competitive. And what we have done in St. Vincent and the Grenadines over the past 15 years in a very planned and structured way is that we have looked to advance a diversified production platform. And uh, we have seen an expansion in root crop production. In fact, close to 98% of the root crops imported into Trinidad and Tobago, they originate here from here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We have significant exports to Barbados, the British Virgin Islands, Antigua, St. Kitts, some to, to the United Kingdom, but also to the United States of America. 
But even with an expansion in root crop production, and over the last four years, we have seen an increase in the production of arrowroot. When you compare the production platform that was once present for bananas and the space that bananas took up on our agricultural production landscape, there's still a lot of room left for many other crops. So what we did is that we embarked on several other production projects, and they include the production of cocoa, the production of, of coffee. In fact, today, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we are an exporter of chocolate. And the largest single employer of workers within the agricultural sector is presently the cocoa company. But we are always looking for other crops to add to the diversification production platform. And in January of this year, taking into consideration what is taking place globally and the expansion in cannabis production, we decided to, to set up a committee of the cabinet and to work with stakeholders locally regionally and internationally and invest svg has played an excellent role to basically frame and to create the framework for the establishment of a modern medicinal cannabis industry the first thing that we had to do was to establish the legislative framework and we are still in the process of completing the establishment of the legislative framework. In fact, today we had an excellent select committee meeting where we are finishing up that process and we are going to continue tomorrow. And a date has been set for December the 10th for three bills to be taken to, to Parliament. And the, the major thrust is the establishment of a modern medicinal cannabis industry and that framework for an industry to thrive. We also have, importantly, a bill that speaks to the issue of amnesty. And uh, from a religious standpoint, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we have a thriving cadre of persons who follow the Rastafarian faith and it is our intention to have it addressed by way of legislation to provide for the, the usage of cannabis as a sacrament within the place of worship. So as it pertains to cannabis in St. Vincent and the Grenadines from a production standpoint there is the important possible revenue income earner as it pertains to a scientific research framework being established. We are blessed to have a tissue culture lab in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and already we have experimented, the Ministry of Agriculture, we have experimented with tissue culture production and I was advised by the technicians at the, the Tissue Culture Lab that they have already been successful in establishing SVG Cannabis Strain 1. And basically what was done is that they took cuttings from an existing cannabis plant and through the process of tissue culture reproduction, they have started to reproduce cannabis in the lab at Orange Hill. And it is very important that in the discussion, we take away from the conversation that scientific research is an industry that we can have from the production of cannabis. In fact, there are several persons over the years who will tell you that there are different strains of cannabis 
in different locations in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, of course, grown under an illegal regime. What we intend to do at the ministry is to take samples from these different areas to reproduce them in the lab by way of tissue culture reproduction and to have persons who are into those levels of research come into St. Vincent and the Grenadines and study these different strains. Because if we are to have an absolute advantage in any particular area within the emerging medicinal cannabis industry, one of those areas that we have to pay careful attention to is whether or not we have particular strains in St. Vincent and the Grenadines that we can test and that we can prove can address certain ailments. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Minister Caesar. And um, we have quite a lot of questions coming in on Facebook, and we are going to get to them. But I just want to direct to Mr. Franklin the question about opportunities and jobs, because this would have happened in Jamaica already, and you are a part of the Jamaica Ganja Farmers Association. What sort of jobs and opportunities do you see in the medicinal cannabis industry? Okay, in this industry, there are so many spin-offs. Most people would think it's just a tree and there's buds and, 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 and you create medicine from it. There are so many spin-offs that's going to be like ecotourism, wellness tourism, treatment. There's a treatment facility, right? Treatment facilities opening up in Jamaica right now. Um, particularly, there's one that, um, that specializes in, in oncology and cancer care. And I have a, a group that's developing nutraceutical supplements right now from various plant life infusing with cannabis, ganja. There are so many things that can be done in agro-processing. The Caribbean region, have, they basically have a lot of medicinal plants that could be used and infused with cannabis to cre uh, treat all kinds of ailments. The diversity of the industry speaks to medical practitioners, nurses, physiotherapists, uh, farmers, obviously, bud tenders, and uh, uh, various other persons in the industry. Thank you very much for sharing that. I am sure uh, many of our viewers would be very happy to hear about the employment opportunities that this new industry will bring. So if we just go to Facebook right now and go through some of the questions. So Rosman Adams uh, says, the current global models of economic development do not support small business nor traditional farmers. What considerations are there to protect current growers and to encourage and support small farmers so that the industry do not fall solely in the hands of large companies? And uh, Minister Caesar and Ms. Mark? Yes, I want to thank Rosman for that question. And basically what the question is asking, for persons who have been involved in the production of cannabis, the illicit production of cannabis, how would these persons benefit from an emerging medicinal cannabis industry? And not only persons who are traditional cultivators, but persons who are farmers. There may be a banana farmer who is a small scale farmer with half acre of land. What space is being created for him or for her within the emerging industry? And I just want to take us back before the period where the government established a quest to create a modern med medicinal cannabis industry. About 10 years ago, in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, an alternative sustainable livelihoods program was established. So the issue of addressing traditional cultivators and assisting traditional cultivators is not something that is new. In fact, even before we attempted to establish a medicinal cannabis industry, there was a program 
to work with farmers who wanted to move from illicit production of cannabis to produce other agricultural commodities. And I want to give one example. The Greg's Rastafari Progressive Society, a grouping of about 60 or so followers of the Rastafarian faith residing in the constituency of South Central Windward. They basically went into significant diversification and investment in the production of root crops. So much so that in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria, they were able to capture a market in the U.S. Virgin Islands and rose quite quickly to become one of the largest exporters of root crops here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And as my brother Collins noted, Russ Collins noted earlier, that he's coming from a history of producing cannabis starting some 15 years ago, but we are witnessing currently where he is a significant exporter of root crops. But within the bill, and I just want to, to make reference to Clause 30. And in Clause 30, it speaks to the issue of funds and resources of the authority. Basically, what would the, the, the license and the fees and some of the taxes be used to do? And it says that the authority shall, with the approval of the minister, responsible for finance, direct that such percentage of sums received from licenses and other authorization fees be applied for the following purposes. A, for the strengthening of social programs related to drug abuse, prevention, and treatment. So monies will be there to address social programs for persons who basically need to be rehabilitated. There are also funds which will be allocated for the training of licensees, and there is a special carve-out for persons who have been involved in the cannabis trade, whether as a cultivator, and even today we had a, a particular discussion, persons who were boatmen, persons who went up to the fields, they may not have owned the lands, but they were farm workers. And we know that many persons would have been locked up from time to time. Persons had to live away from their, from their families and would have suffered over the years producing within a, a context which was illicit. And we are seeing where assistance will be given for training of persons who are licensees, and there is a traditional cultivator's license, which it has been agreed for a period of time, these persons will not pay a license application fee, nor would these persons pay a license fee. It states in paragraph D that funding will be provided for alternative livelihood programs for persons who have been granted amnesty in accordance with the Amnesty Act. So there is a special carve-out for traditional cultivators, and monies will be allocated to assist persons who are traditional cultivators. But I just want to go a bit further because I don't want persons to go away with the appreciation that the traditional cultivators will be coming to the table, each cultivator requesting assistance. Because I am well aware that there are several traditional cultivators since this discussion has started. They have gone overseas, some have already invited potential investors to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. 
and they are in the process of doing joint ventures with them. So basically this will be, and this assistance basically will be for those traditional cultivators who are in the state where they will need assistance and they well definitely there will be persons who will need assistance from from the system from from the state but we have to be clear that there are many proactive traditional cultivators who have already gone and have been able to canvas excellent support from potential investors and some traditional cultivators have already obtained assistance from persons locally, regionally, and uh, internationally. And throughout the bill, there, there are several clauses. For example, the, the standard of production has to be even across the board because we are, our quest is to produce a plant that will be used for medicinal purposes. So we cannot play with the requisite standards which are necessary. However, the, the authority has within its, its purview to take into consideration the different levels of security which will be needed by different producers based on the, the markets that they are attempting to serve and as it pertains to the issue of land because when we speak about traditional cultivators persons who are now farming in the in the mountains on crown lands cap if we look at capital as, as one factor of production we also have to look at the issue of land and labor and the issue of land is that issue which the the government of saint vincent and the grenadines at a cabinet meeting, we, we have established a special committee which will be headed by the, the Minister of Lands to address the issue of providing assistance to persons who wish to get into the production of cannabis as a traditional cultivator or even as a small-scale operator from within the current agricultural system to be able to come to the Department of Lands and Surveys and lodge an application for assistance. So definitely, it's carefully thought out and there are several plans and programs to buttress the embryonic progress that we expect to see within the realm of the traditional cultivators. Thank you, Minister Caesar. Miss Mark? Thank you, Candice. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to take the opportunity, as I always do, to um, dispel the notion that Invest SVG is just here to, de to, um, to cater to the foreign investor. We're not just here for that. We are very much here to work with local investors and more so within this industry, work with the traditional farmers. When we, look, when we get an, a proposal or when we speak to an investor, we are always, we pay very particular attention to those investors who speak about the fact that they are willing to work with, with local farmers, local traditional farmers, that they are, they are also willing to assist with the, the improve, improving them and training, and training these farmers. One of the things that um, I believe that the minister may have forgotten to speak about is that within the act, I believe, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that um, there, is pro there is provision that a foreign investor or a foreign company that's set up here would buy at least 10% of, pro of their products from our local farmers, of course, they must meet the, the international standards with their products. So the act caters and protects them where that is concerned. We, as I said, are willing to work with the local farm, local traditional farmers. Our, office, our offices are open, our doors are open, and we are welcoming them. We look forward to seeing them coming into our offices, and we will assist them 
in making the, tra the transition into this new modern medicinal cannabis industry. Okay, thank you. I just want to stick with you for a moment, Miss um, Mark. A question here coming from Telly Uno. Uno, sorry. Uh, she is asking, how is Invest SVG preparing for facilitation because the industry moves very quickly? Okay, so we will, of course, when they say facilitation, the facilitation could mean a number of things. So I'm just kind of guessing not the person is not here when they speak about facilitation. What we do, we do facilitate um, investors when they come to our office in, in respect to the setting up of their businesses. Um, and generally speaking, with um, getting certain incentives and ensuring that they have as much as possible um, invest SVG as a one-stop shop in getting their businesses off the ground. Now, as, as the person rightly said, this is an industry where there are a lot of moving parts. It's a new industry. Lots are happening. It will require Invest SVG staying on top of what is happening, that is educating ourselves as to what is happening, um, getting out there in the field, going to um, different forums, different um, different um, um, investment conferences and learning and also as we go along and we meet with the investors we try to gather as much information so much so that we have started already sending out uh, a general questionnaire and which would be further developed to our investors to see what information we can get from them because this most some of them are a lot of them are already in the industry over two, three years, five years, they have already been in the industry, and they do come with a lot of knowledge. So the knowledge that they are, they, that we we get from these questionnaires, allow will allow us to will to inform us as to policies going forward, and um, whatever we may need to do as we embark on this new in this new industry. Okay, one more quick question here. We have uh, someone asking how a U.S. investor can be a part of this. Maybe you can share, you know, for any investors that are watching right now, how can they be a, be a part of the uh, medicinal cannabis industry here in SVG? Well, what they need to do is just is get in contact with our offices. It is always good to um, come in and see us because we, or we as Invest SVG, like to know who we're dealing with. A phone call is so impersonal. So we also like to know who we're dealing with. So it would normally start with a phone call or persons coming into our office. We encourage that. And um, of course, sending in a proposal. What we will then do uh, is an initial due diligence. This unit, initial due diligence is not a very in-depth due diligence, but what we do plan to do as, um, as, as the, when the act is passed, we will do a further in-depth um, due diligence uh, that will go quite, it will be quite um, comprehensive. We will, um, once that is done and we've gotten all our, all of the, well, we've gotten our, our proposals, we will evaluate them and then they will be sent to the authority for licensing. Once the licensing is done, then it will they will come back to us and we will facilitate the setting up of their businesses. So generally, in a nutshell, that is what um, we at Invest SVG will do. We, are, we welcome anyone coming in and we welcome you coming in, local, foreign, or to come in and sit with us and have a chat. And, and just to, to add a bit as to what is currently taking place, there are persons from around the world, the persons who are from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, some living in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, some residing in the diaspora. They are currently analyzing the value chain. Some persons are making an assessment as to whether or not it will be better or more prudent for them to invest at this stage of the cultivation. And if they're investing in cultivation, are they going to do the open door, the open cultivation, or are they going to do the a greenhouse? Whether or not in our context an open field cultivation is, is better than, than greenhouse, they are weighing the the pros and, and, and cons. There are some persons who would just like to get into the issue of the scientific research. Some persons are 
into manufacturing, into export, and exportation to, to different markets. So right now, what we are seeing is that persons are drafting different forms of business plans and models, and basically hoping that when the law is passed, that their applications would be honored as fitting into the value chain that is going to emerge here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And of course, as Annette noted, the issue of the due diligence is of first importance. Um, Candice, if you don't mind, um, just for the just just as a follow up with that question that you just asked, I just want to um, encourage persons they can call us on our telephone number on one seven eight four four five seven two one five eight, or they can email me directly at a mark that m a r k no s at investsvg.com. Okay, great, thank you. Um, now just to to touch a bit more on uh, a point that was raised earlier because on social media this thought has been making the rungs as well as on the airwaves one of the concerns expressed is that uh, whilst the idea of cannabis for medical purposes sounds great there are persons who feel that it wouldn't be a level playing field for the local cannabis farmers because the investors stand to benefit a lot more I want to start off with Alvin from the Greg's um, Rastafari uh, Association or Movement. Um, Alvin, you have been to the consultations. Um, from what you've seen and heard, how do you see yourself and your fellow traditional cannabis farmers benefiting? Great. Um, what I want to say, I want to begin by saying this. Contrary to popular misconceptions cultivating marijuana in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is more a sign of poverty than of wealth. In other words, people may think that going to mountain and plant weed two, three months that after you come back you get money, cash money. No, it is not so. With this new, not new, but with this initiative I see we will, we will get a, a reduction in deforestation, police brutality, the stigmatization, and also a lot of different um, problems that we face as traditional farmers. So what I've learned so far with all the sessions that I went, because I'm also a member of the, the um, select committee, I think that is the best way for a traditional farmer to go because there are lots of benefit is it is something that a farmer entitled to free license he also entitled to a five acre of land which is which is plenty so with 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 that with that with that take i think that i should say give thanks to the government of st vincent and the grenadines for this approach. Give thanks. Okay, thank you. And Minister Caesar, if you can just share um, what things have been put in place to benefit the traditional cannabis farmer. The first thing I want to, to note is that at the level of the select committee, as Russ Collins noted and outlined, we, we have traditional farmers at the highest level actually working to put the framework the legal framework together and i want persons to appreciate this because sometimes we we speak about the traditional cultivators as if they're not businessmen or as if they're left out of the process the traditional cultivators that i have met and interacted with over the past 11 months they have a vision they have a foresight and most of these persons are already organized in fact persons will tell you that to be a traditional farmer you had to be a part of a network so it's not like you are seeing persons coming forward 
in an isolated manner. When you go in Greg's, there's a network of persons who over the years have been working together. They have been sharing factors of production. They, they know the science that they have been using and they're willing to embrace the emerging science. So I just want to note that from way of starters. And also to stress the very important point that the traditional cultivators present at the select committee that whilst policymakers had certain plans and programs to assist them, we have even seen a broadening of, of these plans and programs because the traditional cultivators, they, they are constantly making a case for the integration into the value chain which will mean different levels of assistance and you know sometimes the persons who are critiquing the process and in a lively democracy there will be criticisms of any process and we have to to analyze and assess the these comments as they come in but importantly I am not getting from the traditional cultivators that what they wish to have is a system of dependency. When I interact at consultations with traditional cultivators, they are saying, we are organized, we know exactly what we want from this industry, and we want to tell the government that we have started discussions with several stakeholders some persons are investors locally regionally and internationally based and they have already made several commitments i would even go to the extent to note that i have already seen up to a few weeks ago a memorandum of understanding drafted between a grouping of traditional cultivators and a potential investor all that being said though the government policymakers persons at the select committee we are well aware that it's not everyone who would want to be in a joint venture initiative with an international stakeholder a regional stakeholder or even a local one and that they may wish to do it alone now, one of the disadvantages of attempting to do it alone is that if we are creating a modern medicinal cannabis industry, basically one which will be export-driven, we have to meet the international standards. And it's not cheap to meet the international standards. And our traditional cultivators, they have expressed this, that they after speaking to, to persons who have existing investments internationally and persons in the international marketplace, that when you speak about the sums for an extraction machine, it's not a cheap affair. And different strains which would have to be cultivated, which have been studied in great depth and detail, and detail over the years, that to access these, it, it will cost some capital injection. So what the bill is basically saying is that from the standpoint of capital injection, there is the opportunity for assistance. The policymakers have clearly noted that from the issue of land as a factor of production, we are going to assess and analyze the potential establishment of a framework where lands, if one's lands are available, to make lands available to, to traditional cultivators. And the, 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 the last one, which is, the, which is labor, many of the traditional cultivators already operating within a particular framework will definitely be the persons who intend to work 
at different stages of the value chain and definitely their 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 families so what i actually see that will evolve over the next six or so months is a very important period of a transfer of technology and you know i remember i i, I attended a meeting a few weeks ago and a traditional cultivator was telling someone who who has international experience in in the science well this is the way i do it and the international person was saying well this is the way i am doing it and it really boiled down that they were basically doing the same thing but they were calling it by different names and this is the level of interaction as we take on international competitors and we are operating now within a global space where the cutting edge science is becoming the order of the day. We have to create that framework and that environment for a level playing field to be created. And traditional cultivators definitely will be a part of it. In fact, they, they, are, they are currently leading the discussion because during the period of the amnesty it is anticipated that traditional cultivators who are current who are currently engaged in the production of of cannabis that they will come forward and they will start to receive the benefits outlined in the bill for and well for traditional cultivators and we, we noted that two of these benefits is that one a traditional cultivator will not have to pay an initial license fee a traditional cultivator would not have to pay an application fee and we noticed that this was mentioned by by russ collins and these are some of the things that we are looking at to assist the cultivator and importantly as Annette noted, anyone who comes to St. Vincent and the Grenadines to invest in the modern medicinal cannabis industry must purchase 10% of the raw material that they intend to process. They must, they must purchase it from the traditional cultivators. So this in and of itself is guaranteeing a market. So once you have the land, you have the labor, you have the capital, you have the transfer of the, te the technology, you have the support that is outlined in the bill for the training, and you have a market. Then we start to see the shaping of all the limbs of a potential industry of which the traditional farmers will play a very important role. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Caesar, for that clarity. Now, um, we will get back to Facebook very shortly. We see a lot of comments and questions still coming in. But um, as mentioned before, you know, we are on the brink of establishing this industry here. But Jamaica has been at it for a longer period. And oftentimes, the word game changer is used when it comes to the medicinal cannabis industry. Mr. Funklin, can you share your experience? medicinal cannabis begin to be a game changer for Jamaica and um, how do you think it can be a game changer for St. Vincent and the Grenadines? Okay, what, what, what has happened is, uh, I, I can go back to the beginning. What has happened is traditional Rastafari, original uh, traditional growers that used to be in the hills growing, they, they, they went through a, a lot of persecution. I mean, a lot of young persons uh, were marginalized because of probably convictions for small amounts of ganja and stuff like that, and actually participating in an industry at that time. What has happened now, th th there's now an opportunity for the same persons to participate in something that will do well for their families, do well for the society, do well for community, do well for the country as a whole, economically and, and otherwise. The, the benefits that come from this industry that I see in Jamaica, and it's going to happen in St. Vincent, 
is wealth creation and health. Uh, most Caribbean peoples are, we have lifestyle diseases that affect our, our, our health. And the fact that we have, we have dropped the stigma of cannabis because there was a stigma attached to cannabis use and now it has been proven that this plant has medicinal properties. This plant, when isolated, the different compounds can cure various illnesses. It augurs well for the, the health of a population. What's going to happen, it's going to create jobs that, like it did in Jamaica, right? In what I've noticed, the, the herb houses that have been opened in Jamaica, the employment, the, or the employees, are of a certain age, in the 20s to 40s. So young people are going to benefit. This is something that's going to grow. It's, it's going to grow as an industry and create more wealth and employment. Okay, thank you for sharing. And um, if we go to Facebook now, we have a question from Roran Adams. And uh, Roran is asking, what are the risks, if any, posed to the medicinal cannabis industry by a continued illegal industry? And will there be a deliberate, aggressive approach to eradicate traditional farmers who decide to continue planting illegally? Yes, thank you again, Candice. Now, what is being advocated, and not only in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but in Jamaica, in, in Colombia, where there is a movement towards the establishment of medicinal cannabis industries, is that for, for persons who produce illicit cannabis to join the framework that is being established for the production of medicinal cannabis. And there is a school of thought that very soon you will not only be hearing about emerging industries for medicinal cannabis in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Jamaica within the context of CARICOM, but that you will be hearing about it emerging in in other member states of CARICOM. Now, let us look at what is the real life situation. We are well aware that the cannabis which is produced illegally in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, that it is exported to some of the neighboring islands. Now, let's say that three of these islands they move towards the establishment also of a medicinal cannabis industry. And they may even go to the extent, and some I am aware have already started to address the issue of the non-medicinal cannabis usage. What that would actually do is that it will reduce the markets available and the market space that once was filled by illicit producers in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and you could definitely expect implications as it pertains to, to pricing, and not only the, the production or the emergence of industries within the realm of CARICOM, but whilst we are seeing an opening up of the cannabis space in the United States, of, in, in, in the U.S., and also in, in Canada, we are actually witnessing before our very eyes a reduction in the market space for persons who produce illicit cannabis in our islands. So my encouragement to traditional cultivators, before you see a, a crash in the international market space available currently for the illicit trade and movement in cannabis. Enter the medicinal cannabis industry because it is our belief that at the end of the day, the medicinal cannabis industry will outlive the illicit trade 
and that is all being equal of course a lot could change but definitely it is in the interest of the traditional cultivator to look at the 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 licit production of cannabis as a means of alternative livelihood okay thank you minister we have another question coming in here this person is asking how is the bureau of standards being integrated into this how much dollars will the government be putting in to create a supportive environment well the bureau of standards is expected to play a, a very critical role since in this industry the the whole issue of the assessment of standards definitely will be critical but at the center of the establishment of a medicinal cannabis industry and within our context in particular will be the role played by the authority and this is not something that we came up with it is actually an an international legal obligation that we have so there will be an authority and the authority will be in charge in in charge of the the regulations and the implementation and the setting of the standards and these standards will definitely be monitored by the bureau of standards and also by the the authority and they will work out a a nexus so that they we don't have the kinds of overlapping that will create inefficiency but there are several guidelines which are actually under review and even within the regulations there are several outlined minimum standards which must be met and just like any other industry in st vincent and the grenadines being monitored by the bureau of standards the bureau of standards definitely will play a very critical role in this industry in fact the the bureau of standards they were asked to do a a presentation a presentation to the select committee of the house and they outlined several guidelines principles and precepts which must be adhered to and which potential investors stakeholders must take into consideration in the in any in any quest to participate in in this industry it's very important also for me to underscore the point that there are many investors many potential investors who have expressed an interest in ensuring that the international standards are not only met but met and kept so whilst we envisage that there will be significant expenditure to assist the bureau of standards in carrying out its its rules and its duties we also anticipate that the the owners of these products which will emerge that they will definitely have a keen interest in ensuring that they meet the international standards okay and just one more question which i think i'll put to you minister caesar uh cornelius richard says when a traditional cultivator who is almost always capital strapped has a license in hand what's next for him by way of forward investment yes so that issue in terms of the way forward for investment and i i want to 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 answer this this question in a very practical way within the ministry of agriculture there is a diversification unit and what we are seeing cannabis as today as a commodity it's a commodity for diversification and at the diversification unit we will be assisting traditional farmers with the drafting of of business plans also in discussion and their negotiations with international investors local investors regional investors working alongside invest svg we will ensure that traditional cultivators are guided to the the areas where they can receive the support a traditional cultivator 
may not wish to, to draft a letter and send it to the Lands and Surveys Department. But what we are putting in place is that the, the traditional cultivator can come to the diversification unit. He can make a particular case to that unit. And the unit, along with Invest SVG, can guide the traditional cultivator along the right path. Okay, thank you, Minister Caesar. And um, now, we all know that one undisputed fact is the power of cannabis when it comes to healing. And it's often referred to as the sacred plant, the miracle herb, and of course, the healing of the nation. Um, Minister Caesar, well, I have a question for you, but we're going to show a quick video first, and then we're going to come back um, to you about that. Um, but let me give you the question in advance. We want you to walk the viewers through the process that a patient will go through when they wish to gain access to medicinal cannabis or um, medicinal cannabis-related products. Because the medicinal cannabis is not just to be exported, Persons here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines will have access and they do need to know what is the process. But before we jump into that, uh, we're going to take in uh, some information from Dr. Sindro. She's a dermatologist, a medical doctor, as well as a herbalist uh, from St. Lucia. There is factual. Um, information, there's evidence that medical cannabis works um, and it works, you asked about pain and uh, there are certain situations where the uh, other opioid pharmaceuticals do not work or they have such adverse side effects that you know cannabis, medical cannabis, it's the savior for these patients. Pain that comes out of nerve damage and nervous illness. Cannabis, the medical cannabis, is most excellent for that. And we don't have too much in the modern pharmaceutical industry that addresses neuropathic or nerve pain, but medical cannabis has a great superiority in that area. The sort of tremors and spasms all these are uh, so difficult for conventional pharmaceutical medicine to address. And cannabis is far superior at um, giving very good relief for that. So in terms of um, anxiety, insomnia, um, nervous illnesses generally, um, medical cannabis has very good effects. Right away you can see that this magical plant, you can call it, was created to fit in to the body. Now, after seeing that, obviously, if you are in pain or you have an ailment that has been unresponsive to other medication, you're probably looking forward to using medicinal cannabis. So, Minister Caesar, just walk us through the process of how a patient can have access to medicinal cannabis. Yes, so very important in a medicinal cannabis framework is not only the production but also the the application for for patients and there is a, a grouping of visiting qualifying patients meaning persons coming from overseas who have already been diagnosed they they have a a card from either a state or a province they can just come to st vincent and the grenadines they could take that particular card to a medical doctor and the medical doctor would give a prescription. And when they get the prescription, they will take it to a, a pharmacy. And the pharmacy will provide them with the medication. Now, if you are a Vincentian, if you are national, so you're, or, you're originating in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, you will attend your medical doctor. And provided that this medical doctor is one who believes 
that cannabis and medicinal cannabis can can cure your your ailment he would write you a prescription and you will be able to take this prescription to a a pharmacy that is dealing within the realm of the dispensation of cannabis as a drug we have to 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 note the very important point that within our particular context there are controlled drugs which are being administered in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and there is already an established framework for the dissemination of same. So what we are going to do is that we are going to flow along the same stream. We are not going to create a separate network. We are not going to build us a, a new structure. But we may expect in the short to medium term that the, 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 that the possibility exists that there can be regulations to address the issuance of, of ID cards for patients. But to begin the process, and this issue was canvassed at length today in the select committee as to how we are going to ensure the easiest yet safest means for patients to obtain health care as it pertains to patients wishing to use medicinal cannabis and we are not going to reinvent the wheel the drug of the drug inspector in St. Vincent and the Grenadines was basically clear in explaining the structure which is in existence and that is the structure that we are going to use and um, we have a question coming in here from Simonica Williams. Hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly. And she's asking, will it be available at the hospital pharmacy once we get started? That question I really cannot answer. <laughs> <laughs> that, that question I, 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 I cannot answer. Okay. <laughs> and um, we'll get back to a few questions because we're nearing the wrap-up period. Um, but there are several layers in the medicinal cannabis industry. And there's a lot of value in value-added products. Uh, and I just want to ask each of you this question. Um, what cannabis-related products are you hoping can be produced here in SVG for export as well as for use internally? And also, after production, what's the next step? Are we packaging everything here and then exporting, having it certified for us? What exactly is the process? Well, it is very important that we access the opportunities that are highest on the value chain for many many years we have been the exporters of raw material and uh, it is a very important juncture for me to to note that the whole issue and idea of establishing a modern medicinal cannabis industry cannabis is the first product and the first commodity that we are looking at but in st vincent and the grenadines we have the moringa plant we have the aloe vera we have the turmeric we have sour sap we have ginger the idea is not to focus only on cannabis you know but to look at the these other commodities we have to do the scientific research and we have to set up a framework for the extraction of certain compounds from these plants to establish a medicinal industry of which cannabis would only be one commodity. There are persons who are listening who will swear that there are different herbs, and as we say in common parlance, bush tea, that you use from time to time. Remember there was a song, Part of Man Life, body me i seed and the leaf we have to bring the cutting edge science and study these plants we have to start to address the issue of processing because in the next 10 years we don't only want to be speaking about a cannabis industry simpliciter but a medicinal industry in st vincent and the grenadines and definitely it is not going to be in our interest to only be the exporters of the raw material. We want to see finished products, leaves in Vincent and the Grenadines. And 
we expect to see a growth in the manufacturing base, in the, the base for the value addition. I, I noted this commodity produced in St. Vincent and the Grenadines from the extracts of the cannabis plant produced in Union Island has been produced for many years. And in fact, the producer has said to me that persons would travel annually from, from different parts in, in Europe for treatment, but it is not yet labeled. It does not meet the Europe gap standards. It doesn't, it is definitely not going to meet without further work. The standards set by Health Canada, but with further work, further research, we want to take this commodity and to work with the traditional medicinal cannabis producers who are working at the cottage industry level to raise their, their, their levels and basically the output that they have. This commodity is produced in the U.S., and it's already sold and marketed in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It, it has the contents, it has a label, it has a manufacturing date, it has the, the usage and the purpose and how you apply it. And we want to take this commodity to this commodity and not to only focus on cannabis, but all the other medicinal plants that we have in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and to create in the next 10 years a medicinal industry for our country. Do I have time to add to that? Um, yes, you do. Okay, um, I'm so glad that the, the minister brought these products for them. But as you're aware, we did have um, Everything Vinci Expo earlier in, um, in, in October. And what we, what we noted was the n array of products that are actually um, produced here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And I'm not talking about just um, primary products. I'm talking about value-added products. So there is a great opportunity also to infuse CDB with a lot of products that we are producing here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. You can infuse it with chocolate, with water, with coffee. I mean, the, you, topical products. There's so many things across the board that we can infuse CDB with and export to the to the wild world okay thank you and uh, mr Fonklin. further to what was said by um miss marks and and the minister i abs did that basic research in svg and i i understand that svg has a certain amount of medicinal plants just like jamaica which has about 70 percent of the world's medicinal plants so these uh in these medic uh, medicinal plants are indigenous to to the caribbean region what i envision is cannabis infused alternative medicines the minister spoke about moringa aloe vera there's guinea hen weed i'm not sure of the name that it's called in svg but there are various other medicinal plants that can be infused with cannabis so you have a whole different industry you have, a not, you have a lot of growth for this medical industry. Okay. And um, I know we're nearing the time of wrapping up, but I just want to bring up another point here and um, head over to um, Mr. Collins. Now, another, uh, I should say, topic that has popped up quite frequently when it comes to the establishment of this industry is, again, um, exploitation of their local person there is a worry that um, local persons will be exploited and there's also a worry that when the industry begins to blossom it is believed that the industry will blossom quite quickly and very well it is believed that perhaps the money will get to the heads of the persons involved and along the line we would have uh, lawlessness um, Mr. Collins, let me ask you directly, are you worried about being taken advantage of or do you think that you're going to be exploited? Well, actually, I am very confident in this approach that the government has taken in terms of the medicinal aspect of cannabis. And 
you have a saying say confidence make you one even before you have started so i am very confident in this and i see i see in the future that there the economy will boost i see the 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 um the i see a reduction in discrimination as well i see a reduction in the stigmatization i also i also want to say to all the people in st vincent and the grenadines don't have no doubt in this this is a game changer for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And as Subato have said, as the Jamaican have said, they have said it all. So I think it's a good approach. Okay, thank you very much. And I think that's a fitting way to wrap up. We This is actually the first of several Q&A sessions that will be taking place uh, even after um, the passing of the bill. And I want to wrap up with just a few comments from members of the panel, starting with you, Minister Caesar. Yes, I really want to thank all persons who have played a role one way or the other since January of this year has been many long days, many long nights, <laughs> and uh, it is definitely a learning experience for everyone, for the policy makers, for the traditional cultivators, the interaction with potential stakeholders locally, regionally, and internationally. It has been an excellent one. And at the end of the day, I am confident that persons, Vincentians, whether at home or in the diaspora, even though initially some persons may not sound as positive as others, it is my belief that at the end of the day we want the best for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And that some of the criticisms which are being put forward, basically persons want to ensure that policymakers that they don't make mistakes. But I just want us to be aware that we have to be very positive we have to be very confident we we are not going to allow anybody to come into this country and take anybody for a ride i mean persons have been invested in in st vincent and the grenadines in many different aspects the many different production areas and we have a long history of working with investors and we're going to continue that and let us remove from our minds that when you say someone is an investor, it means that they're coming from overseas. They're investors locally. They're investors in Trinidad and Tobago who will come here. They're, they're Vincentian investors who are investing in St. Lucia. And let us look at this landscape which is emerging as a global one. If St. Vincent and the Grenadines, if we decide to cut ourselves off from what is taking place globally and the cutting edge science which has emerged and which is emerging definitely we will not be able to advance the cause of creating a modern medicinal cannabis industry here in st vincent and the grenadines for the betterment of our people miss mark yes um i would like to say that uh it has been a pleasure working on this um on the bill um uh, being involved from the very beginning seeing this whole process evolve what I, um, we are here we are here not just for local for foreign investors but we are here for local investors and within our society within St. Vincent and the Grenadines there are a lot of people that are considered to be high net worth persons and we would love to see them come forward we would love to see private sector participation within this industry so we encourage them and of course, there are endless opportunities. Some of them, which what we which are spoken about tonight, and those that we don't know about as yet, but I'm sure as a result of this industry, will be a, we will be able to capitalize on in other sectors within St. Vincent and the Grenadines. And uh, Mr. Falklin, Falklin, sorry. I I I really implore. Vincentians to embrace this new industry. It's a game changer and I think it's a new industrial revolution. 
and I implore Vincent Jans, as the as the minister said, when regional countries start to open up their markets or their markets for industry, it's going to affect the, the, the production and the sales from the market in St. Vincent. So we have to think globally. You guys have to think globally and try to develop an industry. Mr. Collins? Well, final words. <laughs> what I wanted to say to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, let us endorse this opportunity and take the best advantage of it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, this is where we wrap up for now. If you are interested in being an investor, whether you are in St. Vincent, from St. Vincent, or abroad, you can contact Invest SVG. You can uh, visit them online at www.investsvg.com. You can also call them 1784 457 72159. And as uh, Ms. Mark mentioned earlier, they're always happy for you to come in to meet them face to face to discuss the necessary information. So as mentioned earlier as well, this is just one of several Q&A sessions designed to enlighten you, the public, and uh, we encourage you to like, share, and comment, and um, we'll catch you next time. Enjoy the rest of your evening. What's new about Flo's new postpaid combo plans? They're designed to give you the flexibility to do everything in your mobile life. Simple and easy monthly plans packed with even more data, talk and text so you can stream, post and share anywhere. Talk with anyone on any network or even further away. Plus, roll over unused data and minutes or share with family. Simple, flexible plans with everything you need. Flow's Postpaid Combo Plans. We've got big plans for you.